So I've reached the time in my life where all my friends are starting to get married and having kids. And I gotta be honest, it's pretty scary. I've known these people since middle school and I knew what they were like back then. It's so hard to imagine them going from the immature goblins I knew them as to the somewhat functioning adults they, they are today. They've changed so much and honestly, I don't think I've changed at all. Like I really don't think I've mentally or emotionally developed since the age of like five. And it got me thinking about some TV shows that have changed as well since, since I was a kid. Thomas the Tank Engine has gone from a stop motion animated show to a 3D animated show. Same with Naughty, stop motion animated to 3D animated. Bob the Builder went from stop motion to uh, 3D animated. Okay, I think you get the pattern here. They all went to 3D animation. Even Fine and Sam went from stop motion to 3D. Oh, the cat oh. is still in there. Okay, Norman. Uh I can see oh. the whole of Punch oh, this is, Andy. This is awful. It's disgusting. Yes, of course I can. Okay, Bella. <coughs> But there was one show that really surprised me that it came back because I'm pretty sure they nailed it the first time. Bananas in pajamas. Now, if you haven't seen the show, the two main characters are humanoid bananas. They're, uh, they're gullible, naive, bumbling, clumsy, and I hate to say it, but they're not the brightest. Yeah, which is why I find them really relatable. There's uh, three bear characters, uh, Morgan, Lulu, and Amy. Um, they're like the parents for the bananas. They, they, they guide them on the right path, making sure they don't drink bleach. And then there's this rat character, all right? And he's always scheming. He's always trying to scam the bananas. And that's because he's a big old meanie. A typical episode would look like this. So the rat gets a barrel of radioactive waste and he wants to offload it. So he sells it to the bananas. He tells them it's glow in the dark paint. Um, they paint their room in it. Three days later, they get little banana tumors on the side of their head. The bears go, but bananas. What are you doing painting your room in radioactive waste? They go, the rat sold it to us. Uh, the bears get annoyed. They go over to rat and they go, rat, you slimy clump of shower drain ball hair. How dare you sell the bananas that radioactive waste? The rat goes, <laughs> you got me cheese and whiskers. And they all laugh and they go, let's go to a goddamn picnic. But anyways, looking at the new show, it looks like things are quite different. Um, for instance, they're no longer people in costumes playing the characters. They're, uh, they're, they're this. And they've added more characters in the show, like this. And this. And... Oh. They have a... They have a monkey now? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, God. Even the main characters look different, like the bananas, for instance. Wait, why do they have pink lips? Does that mean they have blood vessels? Because last time I checked, bananas don't have blood. But what about the stories? I'm sure they're just as fun, right? I'm positive this new show can provide me with some wisdom to help calm me about my existential crisis about changing and growing as a person. You know, I've got a good feeling about this. I think we should watch a few and see what happens. All right, let's start with the episode, The Big Jump. This episode begins with the bananas zooming around recklessly on a two person scooter. They visit the rat shop for reasons, uh, even though he scams them on a daily basis and immediately the rat is like, yeah, I'm gonna scam them. Is something wrong, rat? There certainly is something wrong. It's your scooter. What's the problem? It's looking very shabby. The rat sells the bananas some stickers that he wanted to get rid of. He does this by deceiving them. Uh, he, he tells them if they add these decorations to their scooter, it will gain the ability to fly. Yeah. I mean, seems reasonable to me. After purchasing the stickers, uh, the bananas tell the rat that they're excited and they can't wait to uh, fly over the nearby lake. <laughs> Take the lot, rat, and get ready to fly over the lake. Once the bananas leave, the rat just goes, oh God, are they actually gonna jump over a lake? Dude, you scammed them on like a daily basis. You knew that they were gonna take it pretty much literally. I mean, he knows he could like, he could take a dump on the floor and, and tell the bananas if they eat it up, they're gonna gain the power of invisibility and they will do it. Yeah. Rat was right. It does look amazing. No, that looks like shit. 
So the banana show off their new scooter to the teddy bears and are like, we're gonna fly over the lake. Which is totally normal behavior if you're not a complete mental case. Fly over the lake? Well, you can't do that. It won't be safe. So the teddies are concerned about the banana's safety, so they come up with a plan to get the bananas to reject the idea of flying over the lake. We've got to stop the bananas. They can't fly over the lake on a scooter. They might get hurt if they try. But how can we stop them? I don't know. <laughs> Well, maybe explain that it's a scooter and scooters can't fly because it's a goddamn scooter. And maybe explain that by attempting such a feat, the bananas will likely end up with some serious injuries. But instead what they do is they come up with the most convoluted, manipulative way of convincing the bananas not to attempt it. Even if they had a super scooter, they've had no training or practice. Morgan, that's it. They want to convince the bananas they need to do vigorous training in the hopes of beating their spirits so much that they no longer wish to jump the lake. <laughs> it's really healthy stuff. Mm, really healthy. Ready for the big jump, B2? I couldn't be more ready, B1. <laughs> yeah, baseball helmets and a $4 pyjama set from Kmart. Perfect protection. And we also want to help you do it. Banana-tastic! But we're not sure if you're thin and strong enough, Bananas. You need to do lots of training. Lots and lots of training. But it's okay, Bananas, because we're here to be your coaches. I mean, I can see why the Bananas trust these bears so much. I mean, look at their eyes. Their hollow, demonic eyes. Now we begin with phase one of their plan. Torturing the Bananas. jumping over a lake. I mean, you're just doing it for laughs at this point. No oh, time to rest, bananas. Start the hula hoops. <laughs> you can't lie down, bananas. This is training time. <laughs> and here I thought the whole point of the plan was to stop the bananas from getting injured. Yet, here we are just beating them up without mercy. Let's get the bananas so tired that they won't want to fly over a puddle, let alone a lake. <laughs> yeah, and if that doesn't work, let's break their legs. Let's see them push a scooter with their legs all mangled. How are you feeling, bananas? I'm probably feeling a little bit concussed from the multiple head injuries sustained by your training regime. Great job, Teddies. You've managed to prevent the bananas from being injured. More training? You're not ready for a big jump over the lake yet? Could you, could, could you take it down a notch? I'm starting to think you're a psychotic bitch. And because the Teddies get such hard nips controlling others, they don't stop there, they get into a frenzy. Yeah, they tell the bananas that they have to keep training and training and they won't be able to do the activities they do enjoy, such as picnicking and going to the beach, playing games, wanking. And at this point, they have fully broken the bananas' spirits and they back down from their idea of flying over the lake. So we're not going to do the big jump. Woohoo! Oh, that's, uh, that's too bad. Great message for the kids out there. You know, if there's a situation you cannot control, why don't you use manipulation to get the outcome you want? Don't bother having a mature approach to diffusing a situation, just bully them into submission. Yeah. Anyways, that's not even the end of the episode because even after all of that, the rat accidentally pushes the bananas off a cliff and the three of them hurtle down to their demise. It's okay, rat. We're not going to try. Why are we moving? Oh dear! No, they didn't die. In fact, they weren't injured at all. So all that concern was for nothing. In fact, now that I think about it, the bananas got more mentally and physically injured during the Teddy's training sessions than when they actually jumped over the lake. So, wait, 
What was the message of this episode again? Oh yeah, and for the second time, the rat accidentally triggers the scooter again, causing him to plummet down a path, uncontrollably screaming while hurtling down to his death. So they aren't concerned for his safety? I'm really confused about the messaging of this episode. I, I don't know what they're trying to say. Maybe the next episode will provide much better wisdom. After you, B2. After you, B1. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Should I just stop this video right now? That, that almost put me over the edge. So at the beginning of this story, we have the rat gathering everyone around because he wants to make an announcement. I'm so happy you've all come to hear my important announcement. I have a dream. Oh. A beautiful dream. Ah. I am going to be a clown. Oh, what's up? what's up with the hair? Why is it shiny? So, while the bananas are quite supportive of Rat's dream, uh, the teddies are immediately snippy. You? Rat? A clown? Oh, I feel some good old-fashioned abuse coming. So the teddies want to crush the Rat's dream by mentioning he had other dreams that he didn't fulfill previously. They think he might not commit to this one. I mean, it's impeccable logic, really. Um, if you tried something and you didn't enjoy it, why not just give up on all your other dreams? Don't waste time trying to figure out which one's best for you. Just preemptively dig your own grave, curl up and wait for the void to take you. Just a, just a little message for the kids out there. I will be a great clown. I'm Rat the Clown, I'm Rat the Clown. You'll never see a frown when I'm in town. I'll oh, make you laugh. no. I'll make you cheer. <laughs> Your tears and... <laughs> so after that horrifying song came to a close, we come back to reality where the teddies begin to talk authority on something they have no experience in. Being a clown is a lot of hard work, Rat. What's that? Hard work? Learning clown tricks isn't easy. And to be good at them, you have to practice all the time. Oh, cheese and whiskers. Gotta love a supportive friend who does their best to try and stop you from pursuing your dreams. You could go to clown school, Rat, and learn to be a clown there. I'll leave Cuddlestown today. <gasps> leave Cuddlestown? What? You want to leave this small town with absolutely no prospects to go follow your dream? Well, we've got to put a stop to that. That's crazy talk. Please, Rat, think about this. You might have a new dream next week. God damn it, Rat, stop trying to think you can be more than what you are. All right, we want you to stay in this town with us, to be our local shop owner who scams us on a daily basis. Now, what do I need for clown school? Big clown noses? Big floppy clown shoes? And an axe to cut up the teddy bears who stomp on my dreams and a shovel to bury their bodies with, and a fake flower to squirt the audience at the circus. The gang don't want Rat to leave and come up with a plan to create a clown school in Cuddlestown. That way there is no need for him to leave town. It's a real healthy way of dealing with it. Healthy like an apple covered in cyanide. Wait a second, they aren't gonna do what they did in the previous episode, right? Just torture him until he gives up the idea, right? I can't ride a unicycle. You're doing it now! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, You're doing great, bro! Oh. We give you a B plus! Your dream is to be a clown. And you want to go to clown school? So we've set up our very own clown school here. Time for the next lesson! Whoa! Oh, come on, seriously. They're going to beat him up and disguise it as training until he gives up on the idea. You can't do this again. Ta -da! Um, but what are they? Whoa! Oh! <laughs> you see, I will be a clown. But that's only two balls, Rat. Real clowns juggle lots more. I'm sorry, but I thought the whole point of school was to teach. This is like rocking up to Med 101 and they bring out, like, a person who's dying and they're like, you save him or you are out. Real doctors save people. 
Oh, they're just gonna straight up kill him. Yeah, I, I guess that works. Can we have a lunch break, please? You only had three lessons, Rat. And it's only your first day of clown school. And you'll have to do this every day. Every day? Yep, they are. They're, they're doing the exact same thing as the previous episode. I actually can't believe it. Why does this show have such a hard-on for destroying ambitions? Every time a character has a dream or wants to change, they, they just overload them to the point where they get sick of the idea. I mean, I, I just... Who... Who's writing... Who's making this? Of course, you could change your mind about being a clown and forget about your dream. I mean... They're not even trying to be subtle anymore. They're just outright saying it now. I mean, I, I just, I'm just imagining this little kid in front of the TV, eyes slightly glazed over, his mouth kind of gaping open as he's, he's trying to comprehend the messaging of this show, just hard coding it to his little tiny developing brain. No, I cannot give up on my dream. I will be a famous clown. Okay then, if you insist, we'd better start your next lesson straight away. Oh boy, more torturing? I can't wait. Your next lesson, Rat, is to learn the most incredible thing a clown can do. Really? What is it? Being fired from a circus cannon! Let's fire him straight into a pool filled with sharks and then the sharks will eat his body and we can dance around his grave. <laughs> if we can't have Rat, no one can. Sleever, it releases the air and you'll be like this beach ball. Now, I'm no scientist or anything, but I'm pretty sure there's a significant difference between firing a beach ball and a humanoid rat. I hope Rat's going to be all right. Of course he will. Charlie won't really fire him from the cannon. Um, I hope you talk to the monkey beforehand, because it looks like that bitch be shooting some rat out of a cannon. You watch. Any moment now, Rat will tell Charlie to stop. I don't want to be a famous clown! Stop! Stop! Hmm. See? I told you. Oh, look at that smug look on her face. Like she knows her manipulative plan worked. Oh, I can actually feel anger brewing inside of me. Our plans worked! Hooray! Rat won't leave us after all! Ah, mission successful. They have stopped someone from leaving them by crushing their dreams and ambitions. What a wonderful, wholesome message from this beautifully animated children's show. Yeah, we can't have kids thinking that leaving the grasp of controlling people is a good thing. No, because independence is a sin. Uh, grab that lever, Charlie! <laughs> <laughs> Pajama ripping! The bananas are gleefully flying to their deaths. I mean, you gotta love their spirit. Look at their faces right now. So anyway, they survive and the rat decides to drop his dream of becoming a clown and maybe chase some of his older dreams that he didn't pursue properly. And um, the bananas mess that up too when uh, everyone laughs. The end. Yeah. Okay, this is it, the final episode. I'm ready. I am completely prepared for what is about to happen. Gosh, Morgan. You gave us a fright! Sorry, Bananas. I'm trying out my roar. See, I'm a big bear now, and that's what big bears do. They roar! They also maul little creatures to death. <laughs> Amy! Lulu! Oh, what's wrong, Bananas? Uh, we know where Morgan is, and he's not a teddy anymore. He's not a teddy? No, he's a moron. A big bear, like in my Big Bear book. Those big bears. I want to be big and strong just like them. Oof, I think we can all read between the lines here, you know? Morgan showing off his book with big bears. I mean, just look at the way she said those big bears. You know what I mean? Something tells me that Morgan isn't packing a big banana in his pajamas, if you know what I'm saying. But we're not big bears, Morgan. We're teddies. That's right. We're teddy bears! Well, you can't argue with that logic. We like Morgan as a teddy. If he's a big bear, he mightn't play with us anymore. Don't worry, Bananas. It's just one of Morgan's funny ideas. He'll soon get tired of being a big bear. <laughs> they, 
They aren't going to, right? They aren't going to do the whole manipulation torture thing again, right? They're going to do the whole torture manipulation thing again, aren't they? <laughs> Oh god. Oh god, it's coming. I can feel it. They're gonna do it. I can feel it. There's nothing to eat in here for a big bear. If you really want to be a big bear, you'll have to go down to the river. Yep. They do it again. They do it again. Can Morgan really do that? I don't think so. Then why are you telling him to do it? We want Morgan to see that he can't be a big bear. Then he'll go back to being a teddy again. <laughs> no. No. No, no, they can't do this again. They did it to the bananas. They did it to rat. They, they, they can't. They can't keep doing this. I won't allow it. I won't allow this. You know what this is? This is that like 1950s punishment. You know when you catch a kid smoking a cigarette, so you make him smoke the whole packet in one go. And that's all this is, is just psychologically torturing these characters until they're repulsed by the idea of changing or pursuing their dreams. I mean, this show is either written by Rupert Horn from Brewster's Millions or a complete psychopath. So the Bananas decide to watch over Morgan to make sure he doesn't die while trying to be a bear. Morgan tries to catch a fish and is immediately tickled by a fish. Look out, Bananas! Oh, what? What? Something! Ah, tickling us! A fish! I think I'm losing the will to live. Morgan feels emasculated by being tickled by a fish because teddies get tickled and bears do not get tickled. What? <laughs> yeah, you know, I had a friend who was emasculated by a trout once. He, uh, he was never the same after. He just uh, kept singing, don't worry, be happy. Oh, I'm so hungry. Big bears eat honey. And I know where to find some. We know too. Amy's beehive! In Amy's beehive? Oh, bananas, that's disgusting. Have some class. So Morgan tries to put his hand in Amy's box and gets immediately attacked by bees that look like they were designed for a Wish.com bee movie knockoff. Defeated, Morgan continues to search for food and ends up finding a picnic put together by the other teddies. It's just what I need. Uh, uh, hold on, Big Bear. This picnic is for teddies and their friends, not for Big Bears. Racist. So after they try and convince him to drop his desire to be a big bear, Morgan cracks it and decides to head off for a nap in the house, when the other two smugly tell him he can't. You can't do that. Why not? Our house is just for teddies to live in. You know, when these two teddies were made at a Build-A-Bear workshop, I have a feeling someone stuffed them with a little too much asshole fibre. So they convince Morgan that he can only go to sleep in a dark cave. They believe he won't be able to find a cave and will therefore forget his desire to be a big bear. Morgan will soon find out he can't live in a cave. Huh. Then he'll definitely want to be a teddy again. Morgan concedes that he won't be able to find a cave, so he resorts to being homeless? It's at this moment that Asshole 1 and Asshole 2 yell out to B1 and B2 about a picnic they're having. Um, they're doing this in the hopes that Morgan will overhear them and feel terrible inside, so he drops the whole thing and becomes a teddy bear again. They play games as loud as they can in the hopes of getting his attention, and, and it works. Morgan's watching us. <laughs> Time for the next bit of our plan. I honestly can't believe they're doing the same plot as the previous two episodes. Like, each of these episodes is a step-by-step -step masterclass in how to manipulate someone into doing something that you want them to do. The next part of their plan is to play Morgan's favourite game, which is called Teddy Bear Says. Which is basically Simon Says, but the key here is uh, Morgan cannot play it because he's not a teddy bear. It's called Teddy Bear Says. But the funny thing is, is, is when you play Simon Says, I can't remember the requirement of there being an actual Simon. So Morgan agrees to become a teddy bear once again, just for the game's duration. Follow me! <laughs> teddy Bear Says, spin around! <laughs> Teddy bear says, touch the ground. <laughs> Teddy bear says, convince your friends and families to stop following their desires and ambitions by coming up with an over convoluted plan to beat them into submission and to keep them from escaping your control. 
I guess you can go back to being a big bear now. Oh, all right. I guess I will then. Only if you really want to. And be a friend again! <laughs> I, I don't understand why they had to drop him as a friend. This whole thing is so bizarre. At this point, Morgan drops the idea of being a bear, but the others want to test him to see whether he is truly a teddy bear again or not. Big bears don't like tickling. Teddies love tickling. Tickle time! <laughs> Is he passing the teddy test, B2? He's definitely passing it, B1. Okay, so there you have it. I think we can summarise the wisdom we gained watching this show, and it's uh, don't follow your dreams, your ambitions. In fact, don't even try and be different. Um, and if you have a friend or a family member who is trying to pursue their dreams, stop them. You know, uh, torture them with the idea until they become so repulsed by the idea. Um, and that way they can't leave you at all. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll never leave your grasp. Now, I need to make a few phone calls, you know. This whole thing about my friends moving forward and having, having kids and getting married, I, it doesn't sit well with me. I, I can't have that, you know. You know I need to test them. See if they truly, truly want to move forward with their lives because, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I, they, I don't want them to leave me. They, they can't leave me. They won't leave me. How dare they make me feel like I have to change and mature as a person? I'll show them. Pajama-rific.